recorded what happened. That's whatever you saw came from there. This is a 45 or 50 minutes version. We made it to a 10 minutes version. You can see it's available in the, uh, at the end of the website over here. And this has three parts. So first part is content in 2000 levels. That's what you have seen. There's another part, the war crimes on payment of war crimes on punishment. They have shown how was the boy was killed and everything like that. Then the third part is called No Fire Zone. And in Amnesty International, you know, like Jim McDonald is, is showing on, 7, 7, uh, on September 24th at 7 p.m. in Chicago. If you have a chance, please go and look at it. And I'm going to talk about some, uh, so in the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the middle. I initially took the question. Let me say. So this one tells you why, I'm going to explain why I got involved in this. I have seen this. So at the end of the world, there was about 300,000 people who were put it into the concentration camps, so surrounded with the barbaric wires. And they were barbed wires, and they were not allowed to go anywhere. 300,000 people, children, and, uh, and women, and old people. So you can see the pictures of children. See the children. There's a, this one, the one thing I want. There's a children, and there's a policeman or army guys with a gun. This one is the one bothered me the most. So I thought, oh, okay, as how it say, I escaped from this. My children would have been in this situation. And, and we were lucky. So what we had to do? So initially I started, we have to get rid of this concentration camps. That's why we, I started getting them. And my question is, do they deserve it? And how we can help them? And once we see the success, we try to go into the next step. And so what happened was, in May 2009 genocide, as far as I be concerned, we waited till the last moment. Only in the beginning of 2009, we started, or we got the news about what's the happening there in Sri Lanka. What's the happened, and then we waited. We, at that moment, we tried to call our congressmen, go and rallies, capsules, and everything. And, and that was too, too, we started too late. We should have done that well in advance. And we end up with the 40, 000, 40 to 120,000 deaths. Still, I feel guilty about that. We didn't do it. So, but at least, next step, we don't want to have any more failures. That's why the international pressure, again, that's my main thing. International pressure is important. That's the only one Sri Lankan government is going to listen. So that's why we formed a group, Illinois Tamil Human Rights Group. And our hope is that this kind of tragedy should never happen to anyone, for any community, any part of the world. That is our main aim. And we want the Tamils to, we want all the Tamils in Sri Lanka to meet and enjoy the freedom that we get in America. So for example, I tell everyone, when I came, I came to this country in 1986 as a graduate student, 30 years ago. That, as Howard mentioned, that situation was not that bad at that time. We thought that was bad, but it's much worse. So even at that time when I landed here, I felt as a foreign graduate student in this country, I had no rights than a citizen of Sri Lanka. I felt it red, bad, uh, fair. Okay. No, that's why. So, so what we need is the international pressure. For that, we need to bring awareness. Because not many people know what happened. So that's what I'm doing it here. That's what Sunil Abhisar did, everything. What we are trying to do is bringing the awareness. And then put the pressure, through that we can put the pressure to the governments. In all over the world, we put the pressure, something happened. And that can continue all over the world wherever some kind of stuff happened. For example, why I say there's no uh, awareness? Because, so one time, Amnesty International filed a White House petition in Obama's government to support an international investigation in 2011. And they got only 6,000 signatures. It is not people don't care. It's that people don't aware of this problem. That's why we end up with the 6,000. At that same time, I mean, last year, 
Yes, sometimes it's missing. Like some, sorry, last year, when Obama won the election, in Texas, somebody filed a petition saying, oh, Texas wants to be out of the United States. That was a 2,000, 200,000 signatures for that. But here, we didn't get that many signatures because not aware. Then recently, another petition was initially struggled, I mean, the petition, last week, it ended up yesterday, and they initially struggled to get 10,000 signatures in uh, yesterday, but today I checked it, I, I didn't get a chance to update it. Somehow at the last minute they got another 10,000, and it's more than 20,000 signatures they got. I was really pleased at that level, but that is not good enough. We should get in 200 or 1,000 or millions. That's what the petition say? Petition is sending it to the Sri Lanka president to do that. There's a commonwealth meeting is happened in Sri Lanka. There's an international meeting. They wanted them to do the, tell the truth what happened, do the investigations. So sort of that was sent to the Sri Lanka president. They are not going to listen to one thing, but when 200,000 people have signed that petition, do the independent investigation. That is telling them a message. That's why constantly Amnesty International is trying to do. Just, uh, just for clarification, is that the uh, uh, colonization of countries formerly British colonies? Formerly British colonies. So then Canada said they are not going to be part of it, and some people wanted to protest it. Okay. So, Sorry, I'm passing around a red folder with four petitions. They're all for Sri Lanka. Please, if, you're, if you feel inclined, sign in. There's four of them. So, so that's why I said bring the awareness. So I'm going to go a little bit about the current situation. So what's, as far as Sri Lanka are concerned, their plan is they won the war. And they won the war, so they have no problem for them. They thought the problem is solved. And so only problem they had is 300,000 people from the rebel area. Okay, put them in the concentration camp, their problem solved. That's the way they handle instead of solving the problem. So what happened? So four years after the war, they need to solve the problem. They never, never even try. So their problem is right now is so Tamils are living majority in this area. So the Tamils are majority in the yellow area. So the minority living as a majority in certain areas. That is their problem. That's the way they consider. So there are two ways to solve that problem. One is, that a, one is a natural way, and there's an artificial solution. So in the natural way, you find a proper solution, given equal rights to everybody, evolution of power, and minority and minority behaving a partnership, do a partnership control. The artificial one is a colonization, and put the majority uh, people to go over there. And suppress their culture, whatever they are, the minorities are doing, okay? and no power devolution, and dominate the minorities by the military session. So Sri Lanka government, instead of choosing this way, they went into the selecting the other. I'm going to show you some evidence for people in Sri Lanka, it's a very risky. I'm talking here. If I'm in Sri Lanka, I'm not going to be like this. And I will be a person in the corner, not doing anything. But there are some people still protesting. Look at this old lady or the old girl, and they are doing it, protesting. So when there is a protest, all these military come and attack. So one time there is a memorial service. So we annually conduct a memorial service in the boarding room here. So those people who were killed, they were having a memorial service, and they attacked the student leader. Military government supporters attacked the student leader. So they violence is their way of handling it. Whenever there's a protest, they put like, sometimes they come and throw the old, I mean, that's a, it's a better one because they threw the dirty oils at them instead of killing them. That might be better, but that's not the way. So the militarization is the biggest problem in Sri Lanka because they have a prevention of terrorism act. They passed a law in Sri Lanka parliament now about in the 80s. In that, they can arrest anyone and keep it indefinitely in their custody without producing them the in the court. So 
Anybody does something, they don't like the government will do it. Whether it's my, even it's not only for minorities, even they, now they are using it for the majority. Because the war is ended in 2009. Four years or after that, they are still keeping. Amnesty International is trying to asking them to repent. Then Natalie, she mentioned about the Green Wall protest. This happened in the majority area. So there was a, they wanted a clean water. What happened is there was a effect. He was polluting the uh, water supply. So there some public there. They protested. This happened last month. They protested. So the government wanted to, government wanted to stop the protest. So they said they are army went there. So they have got this experience of killing big number of people. Naturally, they use their drugs. Luckily, it's only three of us. But their three majority single people are died of it. And there are so many people injured. But still, it's no plan of an action. So, especially in Tamil areas, there are a large number of army, the military, and the paramilitary groups are there. And they go into as an uninvited guest. Even to any function, or somebody has a function in house or in a school, they go as an uninvited function. They have to go. And pretty much civil administration there is run by the military. That's what is the biggest problem because they do agriculture, fishing, trade, education. Edu they get into education. And you can see what happened. Tourism, development. The governor is an army. The governor of the land is an army commander. Because of that, so they don't give power to the elected representatives. And no actions for the criminal activities. Let them, so let that the condition get worse. Do nothing kind of thing. When there's a drug problem in some area, there's nothing. For example, I live in a Nepal area, there's a drug problem comes up. I received a letter from the congressman, I received a letter from the library, I received a letter from the city, everywhere. So the county, everyone get involved. But here, nothing, and that's nobody else do that one. 